السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم So for today's episode we're going to be talking about attention to detail and why this trait is considered in today's time in today's age akin to a superpower Now I'd like to base this entire discussion upon a very famous hadith a famous narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam it is an authentic one it is recorded in the book of imam muslim rahimahullah and we have a famous companion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he's considered from the creme de la creme the best of the best of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu umar al faruq radiyallahu anhu he is the narrator of the hadith and he goes on to very beautifully describe uh, this this powerful incident that took place in the midst of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so in the hadith uh, obviously due to the brevity of time and given that this episode is short i i mean there there there's There's so many lessons to deduce from this hadith, but I'm going to be touching on a few important points related to the uh, title of this video. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he states, عن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه قال بينما نحن عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم سعمر رضي الله عنه يسيز بينما نحن جلوسنا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم one fine day so I'm going to be uh, translating it in an easy way so the narration goes along the lines of these words just to give you an uh, idea or an understanding of the of how or what happened basically so one fine day we were seated with the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam id tala alayna rajulun shadid bayad thiyab when suddenly a man emerges a man wearing sparkling white clothes sparkling white clothes okay now i want you all to focus keep going back to the title of this episode right and you'd understand why we are basing this discussion on this powerful hadith شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر and he had jet black hair لا يرى عليه اثر السفر and no signs of of journey could be seen on him ولا يعرفه منا احد and none of us knew this individual حتى جلس الى النبي صلى الله عليه واله وسلم so this man now he comes the gathering had already formed we were all seated with the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه واله وسلم And what did this man do? This man who is wearing sparkling white clothes, he has jet black hair, no signs of fatigue or journey could be seen on him and none of us knew him. حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم He goes and sits by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم We are going to now unpack this in more detail in just a bit inshallah but I want to gloss over this initial bit. And then he goes on to say فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه He sits In an intriguing manner, he sits in such a way where his knees are touching the knees of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he places his hands now on his thighs. He's sitting so closely, so intimately with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and now the dialogue begins. This conversation ensues between him and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he says, "Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad." صلى الله عليه واله وسلم اخبرني عن الاسلام tell me about islam and then the prophet responds and then he asks him about iman the prophet responds then he asks him about ihsan and the prophet responds and then he asks the prophet صلى الله عليه واله وسلم about doomsday the prophet responds and then he asks the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about the signs related to yawm al-qiyamah the day of judgment and the prophet responds and then the man gets up and he leaves Now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is towards the end of the hadith we find out the prophet he asks Umar radiyallahu anhu ya Umar the narrator of the hadith atadri man is-sa'il do you know who the questioner was to uh, which uh, Umar radiyallahu anhu he responds Allah huwa rasuluhu a'lam Allah and his messenger know best now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he clarifies 
and he sheds light. Amazing. He responds, "Who is Jibril? Atakum yuallimukum dinakum." He was Jibril, who came to teach you your deen, to teach you, Ya Omar, your deen, to teach the Sahaba their deen, and by extension, to eat, to teach each and every one of us, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our deen. Why? Because until today, thousand four hundred. Odd years have passed and we are discussing the hadith and we are extracting beautiful lessons from this hadith. May Allah open doors of beneficial knowledge for all of us. I mean, so now, now that we have come, you know, to the end of the hadith, we find out that, oh, okay, this is no ordinary individual. This is Jibreel who came to the messenger of Allah in the guise of a human being. I want you all to put yourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, in the shoes of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. These individuals, my dear brothers and sisters, these were the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These were the real students of knowledge. Look at the attention to detail. Look at how much of detail he radiallahu anhu has captured in the hadith, to the extent where he observes so carefully what this man was wearing. How his hair was, the fact that no signs of journey could be seen on him. Today, and I think before we get into attention to detail, we need to talk about human attention span. You know, there are articles, you can Google it. There was a study conducted by Microsoft. Now, this study and the findings of this study have been debated as in in terms of the authenticity and in terms of how the trial was actually conducted and what not but in terms of the stats that were released by uh, you know certain uh, news outlets if you will uh, in summary these articles state that the the average human being now and this was i think in the year 2000 and 2015 or 16 perhaps now we are in 2021 uh so the average human being now has an attention span of 8 you might be thinking minutes 8 seconds and then the article goes on to state that this is a sharp decrease from the average attention span of 12 seconds in the year 2000 and all of this is thanks thanks to technology and a number of other things as well now like i said the numbers are debated all right uh, the authenticity of the article is debated as well but nonetheless let's leave all these very specific numbers aside would you not agree and would you not relate to the fact that today you see that our attention spans are decreasing there's no doubt about it if you look at how we consume uh, media and how these social media platforms are being engineered Now look at something like you know if you take Instagram initially it used to have options or rather you start off with this platform YouTube you have long videos but then people you know they they were if you were to look at analytics you would see the people are you know they would go into a video and just keep switching you know from video to video and then from YouTube you you take something like Instagram the 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 time in terms of the duration of videos you have like a, a a video that lasts for about a minute and from there it evolved into stories where it's just 30 seconds and now you have let's say you know platforms like tiktok uh, and perhaps other platforms that focus on just i don't know maybe 10 seconds 15 seconds and and we keep swiping 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 you know consuming so much of media uh, you know just glossing over there is not much attention paid to the details there's this overload of information and our brains are struggling to deal with this much of information that's out there you see today interestingly being knowledgeable is not necessarily considered uh you know something almost like a superpower or rather something that is high in demand why because there's so much of access to information right in in a matter of a few taps you can access information which is not the case in the past and that's why there was so much of demand for knowledgeable individuals in the past now today because of this 
this bombardment of information and access to so much of information, now you need attention to detail to be able to sift through all of the information to ensure that you know you 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 arrive at the right type of information, the right pieces of of uh, information. And when talking about attention to detail now, you'd understand why it's so important. Let's take the leader of an organization. Let's take the leader of a company, the leader of a business, the leader of a team. Just imagine if you had to uh, present a, a, a presentation, you and your team had to present a report or a presentation. And if there was not going to be attention to detail, what's going to happen? You're obviously going to have mistakes in the report, mistakes in the presentation, perhaps spelling mistakes, maybe you get the slides all mixed up. So when you fail to pay attention to the details of an important task that you're supposed to deliver, now it's going to contain mistakes. And it's going to look like you have not reviewed your work before it goes out into the world. And what kind of a message do you think you're sending out? You're sending out a message that you are disorganized, your team is disorganized, and you rush with regards to your work. You send out a message that you actually hope that people will look past the issues, look past the mistakes, and will spend time trying to understand the core contents of your presentation or your report. You also send out a message that you think that people won't notice. And you're also sending out a message that you and your team are not capable of producing high quality work. So as you can see, attention to detail really, really matters. If you look at the benefits when it comes to high attention to detail, for a person who has this trait, and, 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 and for those of you who are thinking, oh, you know what, that's something that I really struggle with and I've got issues with that. Well, it's not all gloom and doom. I'm going to be sharing a few techniques in just a bit, inshallah, to improve, to ramp up the levels of your attention to detail. In terms of the benefits, benefit number one is that you're going to consistently produce high quality work. You're going to consistently produce high quality work wherever you apply attention to detail so long as you don't go overboard with it. Now, there are, there are negatives to it as well when you let it consume you and when you turn it against you in a negative way. That's when you become you know, obsessed and it uh, develops into an OCD, if you will, uh, perfectionism, where you're you know, constantly striving for this, this standard that you yourself know you're not going to be able to achieve, and that's the standard of perfection. So healthy balances need to be maintained. But nonetheless, when you, when you, uh, you know, hone this skill, this trait, and when you apply it in the right way, you're now going to be able to produce consistent high quality work and on top of that you're going to be efficient why your work does not have to in other words you don't have to return to your work to fix mistakes because if you're going to gloss over and not pay attention to the details you're going to put it out and then you'll have to come back to it let's say you publish a report and now there are mistakes that need to be rectified it's going to come back Let's say you're designing a car. If you put out the car, if you start producing it, put it out to the market, and now once, let's say, I don't know, maybe 100,000 people have purchased cars and they're driving it around and doing whatnot, and you now realize, or it's pointed out, someone finds out and says that, you know what, there is this massive flaw that you overlooked. Now, what do you have to do? You have to recall all those units to rectify the issue. It's cumbersome. It's costly. That's why a lot of these companies, car companies, tech companies, they actually spend a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, at certain junctures, certain mistakes do happen. But nonetheless, they spend a lot of time you know, ensuring that 
they pay as much attention as possible to detail to ensure that these mistakes don't happen. They learn from their mistakes and they pay a lot of attention to detail. Another benefit is that you are now deemed trustworthy. Why? Because now when a, when a task is given to you, this, this task would rarely need a second set of eyes going through it. So you start to build a reputation for yourself that, you know what? This individual, high attention to detail. You give him or her something to do, or you don't need to follow up on it. That individual's work, his or her work, another set of eyes need not go over the work. Why? Because high attention to detail. You start building this very valuable reputation for yourself. And it's a very rare skill set these days, my dear brothers and sisters, a very rare skill set. You as an employer, you as a leader, you would value it in a team member of yours. You would value it in an employee of yours. So it's very important that we highlight the importance of this. And interestingly, when you look into the lives of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, you see it, subhanAllah. You see it in the life of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. You see it in the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. You see it in the life of Abu Huraira radiallahu an. You see it in the way they have narrated these narrations. Because if you look at this hadith, for example, Umar radiallahu an who could have omitted all those details and just jumped straight into the conversation. But the fact that he observed all of this proves to us that, you know what, he would have, I mean, he was an individual who captured so much of detail, there's no way he would have messed up with the conversation. He's captured so much of detail. You and I, at times we are in a gathering and let's say someone comes and goes, we'd rarely recall what they wore, how they sat and how they spoke. But look at the memory of Umar radiallahu anh. Look at how observant Umar radiallahu anh was today. You know, we read about Sherlock Holmes and we, we uh, you know, perhaps we read up on those qualities and those traits. And like I said, we think, oh, wow, it's, it's something amazing. You know, how, how does one have such a keen eye for detail? But it wouldn't suffice to just read up on it and think of it as being, you know, a, a, a good thing. We should try to bring it into our lives because there are so many benefits to it. So I'm now, now going to go into a few tips, like I said, in terms of improving one's, uh, you know, uh, attention to detail. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, you and I, we need to get organized. It's very, it's, it's very important because think about it this way. If there is chaos, how uh, obviously the, 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 the fine details are going to slip through the cracks. So most of us, you take your workplace, it's in chaos. You take your vehicle, it's in chaos. You take your home, it's in chaos. You take your cupboards, they're in chaos. You take your drawers, they're in chaos. You take your wallets and purses, they're in chaos. You take your lives, subhanAllah, lives are in chaos. And this is why it's so difficult for us to retain focus. This is why our attention is all over the place. This is why we don't have direction in our lives. We don't know where we're headed. We wake up every day and just, you know, get about with the day like zombies. So it's very important to be organized. This is tip number one. So as much as possible, organize your workspace. By organizing your workspace, it can actually help you focus on your work. Organize your digital spaces. As we speak, I want you to go to your desktop and just see how many folders are cluttering your desktop, how many files, how many screenshots, how many random downloads, if you will. So we need to get our digital spaces sorted out as well. And at times it can be challenging, you know, at times you have an inbox with a lot of messages, and but it can be a work in progress where you need to get all your digital spaces organized you need to get your physical workspaces organized, your living, uh, you, let's say your home organized, your, 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 your bedroom organized, your drawers organized, your wallet organized. Sometimes we go on to cram, you know, receipts and so much of 
pieces and bits and pieces of paper into our wallets, into our purses, into our handbags, where at times looking for something, you end up going down one big black hole. So there are ways to get yourself organized and subhanallah, like I said earlier on, so much of information at our fingertips. There are so many videos to help you, to teach you how to get your things organized, how to ensure that your wallet is organized, how to ensure your workspace is organized. There's so much of information out there. So you can apply those principles in terms of getting your life uh, organized, getting your schedule organized. Now, this is another thing, you know, where you have uh, today... In the past, people had to maintain diaries, people had to maintain calendars. Today, you have all of it, you know, in all the devices that you have. You know, you have a calendar on your iPad, you have a calendar on your uh, your computer, you have a calendar on your mobile device. You, you It's so easy to schedule and, and uh, you know, organize the time that you have in a, in a very nice way. So it's, it's key to ensure that important dates, deadlines, all of this is organized. And you need to review all of this. So all of what I mentioned come under getting organized. So once this happens, you are able to cut through the chaos and focus on things that actually need to be focused on. Number two, maintain a routine. So this is in a way connected to you know getting a calendar in order and getting your schedule in order. You need to maintain a, a, a routine, a daily routine, a weekly routine, a monthly uh, routine where you ensure that you know you devote time to specific tasks today uh you know i think with, it's with ios 15 you now have um something called focus where you are able to eliminate distractions now by maintaining a routine and that's the next step you begin to eliminate distractions, distractions in the form of unnecessary notifications, distractions um, in the form of things like, for example, things spilling onto one another. Let's say you have, let's say you're working from home and you have slotted 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. that you're going to get certain tasks done. Now, during that window, that period of time, you really can't be entertaining uh, text messages or uh, WhatsApp messages, for example, that are not urgent, that could just distract you and take you down a rabbit hole where, you know, important tasks get ignored. So maintaining a routine is key and then eliminating distractions. Along with that, uh, another tip that can be mentioned before I conclude is to create lists. Today you have, take your iPhone, you have reminders, you have notes, you have all these applications that help you to get things organized in your life, to ensure that you have your goals, your short-term goals, your long-term goals, all in, in a place where you can look at, you know, checking box after box and achieving those goals. So it's key to maintain these lists, to put down your tasks in order. And along with that, like I said, you have so many apps to help you do this. There are even apps out there in the form of, of games. If you're looking at, you know, some recreational time, if you will, um, I think I recall um, a, a game, I think it was called, um, what was it? It was Elevate, if I'm not mistaken, that actually helps you to sharpen your, 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 your brain, uh, to help you with your memory, to help you with recalling things. You know, when we, when we were kids, we used to play uh, I Spy with my little eye, right? So even that I was reading the other day is an interesting game that helps children build their attention to detail. So it's a thing that perhaps you could play with your kids. It helps you and it helps them as well to focus, you know, where you say, okay, I spy with my little eye, something that begins with this color or something that begins with this letter. And they start, you know, looking around. And you know, interestingly, when you play this game with your children, sometimes you begin to look around your bedroom in such a way that in the past you may have never ever looked around, you know, like spot the difference, for example. You know, you start looking at a picture in a way that you've never ever looked at it before. You look around your room, you spot things, you see things that you, you may have glossed over earlier on. So these are things to help you increase the levels of your attention to detail. So I hope this video was of benefit to touch on the importance of, you know, this skill and, you know, harnessing this skill and, you know, sharpening this skill. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us all to do that. And I sincerely pray that he helps us to become uh, more productive. And th that was the uh, intention behind, you know, putting this video to help 
myself and then all of you all uh, tuning in to become more productive in our day-to-day -day, uh, lives. I look forward to talking to you all in another video soon, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.